Okay, let's look at some examples for section 6.4. It says write the complex number in a plus bi form, so put it in standard form of a complex number. Uh, we're going to look at part a, and the first thing we always want to do is analyze what gets spit out from the radical or the square root, and in this case we get a 2i, and then I have the negative 8 over 2 still there. Now keep in mind the 2 is divided into both pieces, so I'm going to split up this fraction, negative 8 over 2, plus 2i over 2, and then we can reduce, so we end up with negative 4, plus these guys reduce as a 1 over 1, just 1i. So negative 4 plus i is my final complex number. Part b, again, I go over here and I try to analyze what will happen. Nothing pops out of the 2 because it's not a perfect square, however this negative that I have it's actually square root of a negative 1, which spits out an i, so an i comes out in front of the radical and the 2 stays as is because I can't reduce it any further. Um, and that's all over 6. And again, the 6 is divided into both pieces, so I have negative 5 over 6 and my as my first piece, and then minus i uh, root 2 over 6 and as my second piece. So this is an acceptable answer or if you want to put the i at the end, negative 5 over 6 minus root 2 over 6, and we can't reduce this any further because the 2 has a radical but the 6 doesn't. You can put the i at the end if you want, so they're both acceptable answers. Next problem says solve, write your answer in complex as complex numbers. So maybe the solutions we get are actually going to be complex numbers. And I'm going to use the quadratic formula, so a is equal to 3, b is equal to negative 1 and c is equal to positive 1. So x is going to be negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this over 2a. So let's go plug in our values. We have a negative b, b is negative 1, plus or minus square root of b is negative 1, square it, minus 4, a, and then a location for c, leave it open. Always put parentheses when you're substituting. So a is 3, and c is 1 in this case, all over 2, a which is 3. x equals negative and negative make a positive 1, plus or minus, square root of negative 1 squared is a positive 1, minus, these guys stay 4 times 3 as a negative 12, all over 2 times 3 is 6. So now I got x equals 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 12 is negative 11 all over 6. And notice this negative I have to take out as an i because it's square root of negative 1. So I have x equals 1 plus or minus i comes outside square root of 11 all over 6. So these are my two complex solutions that I found to this quadratic equation. Um, so this is good enough for me, or if you want to put it split up, the 6 goes with both of them, 1, 6, plus or minus, maybe you'll put it as like a square root of 11 over 6, and i all by itself, that would be in the form a plus bi. However, there are two, keep in mind we did find two complex solutions, one of it with the plus in the middle, and the other one with the minus in the middle. Use the discriminant to determine the nature of the solutions of this equation. Remember discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So that's all we worry about out of the entire quadratic formula, out of this entire thing right here, the discriminant is only this guy. And that's all we really worry about when we analyze the discriminant. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Remember if d is positive you have two real solutions. If d is 0, you have one real solution. And if d is negative, you have two complex solutions. So that's basically all they want. Which of these cases are we going to encounter in example 3? So I gotta have my a, which is 16, my b, which is negative 7, 12, so you're gonna need your calculators of course, and c, which is 
7921. And again, all I really care about is the discriminant. So this is what I'm going to go analyze. And I'm going to end up with D equals, B is right here, negative 712 quantity squared minus 4A16 and C is 79.21 and I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. So once I punch those into my calculator I actually squared this guy and got 506,944 and when I multiplied these guys out I got the same thing so ultimately my D is 0. So if D is 0 I will have one real solution. In other words, if I were looking at the graph of this parabola, uh, it would only have one x-intercept, which would pretty much be the same thing as its vertex. It didn't ask that. That's just a side note. That's what you should be thinking when you get one real solution. That means that if you were thinking of it in uh, uh, the graph of a parabola form, there would be one x-intercept, which would be the same as the vertex. But in this case, they just said, tell us the nature. So the nature is there's only one real solution. Use the quadratic formula to solve for the indicated variable. And I haven't really written in terms for what variable, so I want this solved, let's say, for t. So in other words, the only thing that acts as a variable here is the t's. We don't really care about anything else. The t's are the variables. All those other things that look like variables are really just numbers. So when I'm done, I should have t equals garbage, garbage being all the other variables on the other side, and t all by itself on one side. Now to begin with, I really don't like that fraction one half, so I'm going to multiply all the chunks by 2 to get rid of that 1 half before I do anything else. That's going to be 2s. So we've got 2s equals 2vt. Mm, 2's are gone here, minus 8t squared. Now again, have your eye on the t squared and the t because you're going to use the quadratic formula on it. Now since this is a quadratic equation, I'm going to move this 2s to the other side so I can set it equal to 0. So minus 2s is my constant then I have this term which is actually a positive term and then minus 8t squared. So here's my quadratic equation with always my eye on the t being the variable. So basically what I have is this is like my A, this right here is like my B, and this right here is like my C if I were thinking of the quadratic formula. But um, I kind of don't like, I personally don't like the negative leading coefficients, so I'm going to divide everybody by a negative 1 just because I can. If it's an equation, you have the right to divide everybody by any non-zero number you want. And I'm just going to go ahead and make everything positive. 0 equals 2s. This becomes negative. That's OK. Again, I repeat, I only do this because I like my leading coefficients to be positive, And that's just something personally I like. So now I have, I'm going to put it on the other way, at squared, the way we're used to, minus 2vt plus the 2s equals the 0 I need. So now, finally, again, remember t's are the variables. Finally, 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 I am able to get my a. In this case, it's really just an a. b is this coefficient minus 2v. And c is that last constant, which in this case is 2s. So really, after doing some simplification, I got my a, my b, and my c to plug into the quadratic formula. And again, remember, I'm going through all of this because I'm supposed to solve for t, kind of like we used to solve for x before in quadratic equations, like up above over here. Notice I was solving for x for this equation. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve for t in this equation where all the other things look a little bit funky. So there's the quadratic formula, and I'm ready to plug in my a, b, and c. So t is equal to 
negative b, so negative b becomes a positive 2b actually, plus or minus because the double negatives make a positive, b squared, so that's negative 2b squared minus 4, a is a anyway, and c is 2s, all over 2a, a is a anyway. That's going to give me, so now we're at 2v plus or minus, that's going to be a positive 4v squared, minus 4 times 2 is 8, I have the variable a and I have the variable s, all over 2a, and that's my t. Now, remember when I have this link between them, I can't break open the radical into two different pieces, so I can't really pop out the 4 or the v because it's linked with this 8s, and since I can't really do any more simplifying underneath because they're not like terms, I am pretty much done. This is what the t value is in terms of all the other variables. So what we went through was take this guy, simplify it, do whatever it takes to put it in standard form, like ax squared plus bx plus c, pull out our a, b, and c, and then get the t all by itself.